Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm back with part two of the 20th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com. Again, this is a hand from the Bankroll Builder series. You can check that out at BankrollBuilderSeries.com, where I pick up the aces. I'm Kagam 7 f 7 and we are against this player, Ready for All, who is an absolute maniac. And this may not be much of a critique, because he's crazy and not playing well, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Um, the player on the button, Buck Seeker, opens to 30 cents, and Ready for All decides to 3-bet to $1.20. And I really don't like 3-betting out of position with garbage, but some players do it all the time, and honestly, it's not that bad if your opponent is opening a very wide range. And if you look here, Buck Seeker actually is opening 21% of hands. So, um, let me actually let me actually pull up Poker Stove here, and I'm going to show you what 21% of hands looks like. Let's assume it's the generic 21% of hands. These are hands that he's probably not going to be folding to 3-bets too often. I think it's going to be more of a range, something like this, is what you're going to actually be looking at. And you'll see this is actually a pretty strong range, even 20%. So because of that, I think raising... Like, if someone's raising these hands, they're probably going to call a 3-bet with a pretty good amount of them. So it's not really a great spot to 3-bet. If, op if he was opening a ton, I think it'd be okay. But do notice that... um. Buck Seeker does have a 55% steal percentage. So let's go back over here and change this to 55% and see what we're looking at. You'll see this is quite a bit of hands. Obviously he's going to fold Jack-7, Jack-3 suited, 10-5 suited, Jack-9 off suit. He's going to fold all those to 3-bats. So if he's actually raising that often, I really don't hate a 3-bat here with a, a very wide range. But this is not something I would do. I would just wait for a better hand. So Jake uh, Kagm 7 f 7 who is me on Lock Poker, Ruins the day and finds a call with the pocket aces. And this is a very, very bad spot for Ready for All right now because he, uh, Kag M7F7, me, clearly has a hand. So when your opponent clearly has a hand, it's really just time to get out of the way. Ready for All likes to bet out 250 on 744. I actually think this is a pretty good spot just to check fold, unless you plan on just super barreling off, and I don't even think that's that good of a play. When, um, uh, Kag up here likes to call, his range is going to look a lot like big pairs and ace-king. If he has ace-king, he's going to fold. If he has big pairs, he's always going to call down. So this bet here is only going get, to get us off ace-king, so because of that, I do not think it's that good of a bet. Plus, we have to worry about Buck Seeker here also having something. So I think this is just a spot to abandon the hand. I mean, I know it's no fun 3-betting than just check folding, but I actually would not hate it here. When Kag M7 F7 calls, you just gotta be done with the hand. The turn's a brick, he checks, and then Kag makes the good play and checks behind to hopefully induce a bluff. Ready for all shoves the river. This river doesn't really change anything at all if Kag M7 F7 has a a big pair, like tens or better, he's just calling here every time. So all in all, I do not think this is that good of a bluff, just because it's blatantly clear that Kag has some sort of hand, and because of that, you just can't bluff him off of it. And, and you know, a lot of players, whenever they do 3-bet and then throw out a continuation bet, they sort of feel committed to the hand. And that's something you just cannot allow to happen. You have to realize that in spots like this, you cannot win the pot. And now, imagine instead of having 10-3, imagine he had something like pocket 8s. It would be a very similar situation where betting here would serve no purpose, because you're only going to get called when you're beat. And for that reason, if if he did decide to 3-bet with pocket ace and got called here, I probably would bet the flop and then just check fold. So, um, the fact that he has 10-3 is, of course, cool, but don't ignore the fact that he could have had anything here and try to figure out what he should do with this whole range and how he should go about playing it. I think if he did have a set here, like 7s, 9s, or 5s, he should have played it the exact same way. I think it's a pretty good way to go about playing it. Because, you know... Uh, Kag may float with Ace King and then decide to hero call on the river or something. But uh, with 10 3, this is not a very good hand. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Uh, if you guys like seeing a few hands from the Bankroll Builder series, please let me know if you think these are crazy because they're 5 cent, 10 cent. Uh, let me know that too. I'm more than willing to give you guys whatever type of hand histories you want because, you know, I'm trying to help educate everyone. So if, if you're interested in the Bankroll Builder series and you want to see all the hands, what I do is I basically load up four tables and then record every hand I play for about 45 minutes or so every week. And I think it's a great learning tool, especially if you're trying to grind up a bankroll from scratch. 
So check it out, bankrollbuilderseries.com. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.